Buckle up, guys. I can pretty much guarantee you have never seen something like this. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Bish's RV of Junction City, Oregon with an ATC Game Changer. I'm dedicating today's video to Mr. Aaron Swolsey, a, uh, a former co-worker actually, who just always really wanted an ATC uh, RV himself. So Aaron, this one's for you. But for everybody else, ooh, you are in for a treat today. There, you know, you'll hear me say sometimes there's not a splinter of wood in the structure of this RV. There's not a splinter of wood at all all in ATC RVs. It's called the Aluminum Trailer Company for a reason. This is all aluminum, baby. Aluminum skeleton, uh, aluminum, uh, you know, skin. And that's another really cool thing on these. Um, because it's an aluminum skin, not a fiberglass, it doesn't have that chalky oxidation factor and it's it, they're always painted. Think of how many big fancy fifth wheels people spend tens of thousands of dollars sometimes on paint packages. Uh, that's what these guys do standard every day. And there's actually several different paint colors. There's like five or six different exteriors you can get on these. Uh, frankly, I've seen a couple of them here in Junction City. They all look good. This one right here, the reason I think they call it the game changer is just the way that like the whole thing converts. You can have it in just sweet party mode and just have all kinds of people over. Or you can change the game and you can convert it into just a full max garage. But all the pieces, parts, components, everything in here, um, it, it, it's just all premium grade, like, you know, bigger air conditioners, bigger vent fans. And how about the fact that one we're looking at today, and understand specs might vary from model to model, the one we're looking at today, the 4023 Game Changer um, fifth wheel, has 9,000 pounds of available cargo capacity. How about the fact that it has 200 gallons of fresh water? And the crazy nonsense like that just keeps going. They have absolutely earned their name. Now, the thing is, um, I, I have a limited time here. So this is the 4023 fifth wheel. There's also uh, various travel trailers. There's other floor plans. I'm going to give you another quick look at, say, one of their travel trailers here just to sort of give you a feel for this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go through this fifth wheel in extreme depth as much as I think I possibly can. Uh, and the reason being because they're all physically built the same with the same materials in the same way. Just the layout might change. So we're going to do a deep dive into this sucker. And I think that that will help you connect the dots. Like if you just see some pictures or video, or if you ask one of our team members here in Junction City, hey, you've got that one in sec. Can you do a flyby video on that so that you can see everything and use this information to see if it's the right one for you? I know this was a big, long intro, but this is a special kind of product that takes a special kind of setup. But one of the really cool things with this, one of the reasons they call it the game changer, is because they kind of change the way that you can use these things. So right now, I have it in what I'm going to call maximum living mode, where it's just like all the seats are set up. And when I say all the seats, I mean, if you want to have all your friends and family and their friends and cousins and their friends and cousins over here, you've got room to seat everybody. Like, uh, we're standing in the kitchen. There's our entry door, just to kind of help you, you know, get your bearings a little bit. But awesome window coverage all over this thing. That's one of the actual interesting benefits of not having slide outs all over the place. Um, you know, it, it allows designers to put the kitchens where they want to, and that allows them to put windows where you want them to. Now, again, everything in this is aluminum or composite. The, uh, the cabinetry, you know, aluminum. Um, the wall panels, the ceiling panels we're looking at, those are all composite materials, kind of like, like Asdo, essentially, something like that. Now, you see this loft up here, but if you're really paying attention, that guardrail is the ladder. So it does include a, uh, a built-in ladder, and I'm going to go, go, gadget arms and see if I can get you up there for a little bit better look. How about that? Turns out it's kind of handy to have the camera taped to a broomstick when you need to get up here and, and look around at things. Now you might notice this like, it sort of looks like crown molding, but that's actually areas where they can run wiring around the RV uh, without it, you know, looking like conduit wire all over the, uh, the, the camper, as it were. Um, this is kind of interesting over here. You know, you've got this, uh, this dinette situation that we just looked at. But down below that, there's this little flip-up bar over the top of the wheel well right there. Um, perfect little place. You know, you could use it like a desk. You could uh, bring out a couple chairs or stools or something like that. 
Then we come back into the garage area. And again, they just never waste an opportunity for storage in these things. It is just, or not storage, seating. I'm sorry. I'm used to talking about storage in so many RVs. And we're going to get there on here. Uh, but, I mean, anywhere you can think this thing opens up, uh, you know, for, for seating space, for sleeping space. Of course, we have the, uh, like, Happy Jack Power bed lift uh, system back here. And if you're noticing, though, that's like a real mattress. That's not one of those chintzy little bunk mattresses that a lot of manufacturers put up there and go, hey, look. Uh, and additionally, if I look you way up top here, one of the other things you see is that you do have air conditioning back here because you can cut this off to have separate rooms. You're going to want that airflow. But this is why they call it the game changer. Everything can get out of the way. So if you want it in, like I said, maximum living mode, you got it. You want to fold everything down to get out of the way for maximum loading space. You want a full front to back, like, mega garage. Uh, name another RV that can do that. I'll wait. And that is where this one really starts to get fun for me. But the thing is, like, um, I have a little bit of a background in horse trailers. And, I mean, when you're putting thousands and thousands of pounds of shifting weight in something... There is only one true heavy duty solution, and that is an extruded interlocking aluminum plank flooring system, which is exactly what we're looking at here. Big, heavy draft horses and teams of them, this is what you're going to put under them. Now, here's the thing. Um, you know, part of the reason they like heavy duty aluminum flooring like this for horses is because, you know, horses uh, make animal waste. Well, I hope your side-by-side um, -side ATV doesn't create animal waste, obviously, but the fact is, it might be wet when you're loading, it might have a little oil or fuel drip or something like that. It's not going to wreck this floor. Again, everything is aluminum, everything is composite, and if you notice, what you've basically got here um, is is kind of like, uh, like, like not a, not E-Track exactly, but, but like a similar kind of system where you can load stuff in all kinds of crazy ways and if you notice it actually it doesn't like it's not just on the floor it's not just on the walls in the garage if you're really keeping score and if you're really paying attention it persists all the way through the main deck here like this little center divider by the way that could be pulled out of there um i i'm just doing kind of a quick demonstration so if you want to leave it partitioned off awesome if you want you know uh one uh, an rv with a private garage you got it you want one with maximum open loading space you got it you want one that can do either well this is pretty much it and when it's when you start looking just past skin deep you know that's where the i think you start to see the true generational value of this one because remember all the wall paneling we're looking at that is all composite material as well you see all aluminum you know ev everything's metal everything is some sort of uh you know composite there's just it can't rot it can't like mildew and and decay now obviously if you you know pour water in here and then shut the door and leave it yeah okay you could you could create a nice little musty smell but the fact is you could come through and you could scrub it up dub this thing and clean it right up and it's going to basically be good as new when you're done you know that new rv smell um <laughs> it uh it may never necessarily leave this one now if you noticed we had an air conditioner back in the garage we've also got another centralized air conditioner uh right up here then you also see that bigger xl vent fan above your kitchen facilities but you know i've never yet found the perfect rv i appreciate the fact that that's on a swing arm but that's the only direction that it swings that seems like a little bit of a miss to me but at least it is a nice smarty pants tv in case you want to do something like that convection microwave oven over here and you, you, did you notice it does still have a traditional oven as well all solid surface countertops again no wood core product hidden away anywhere um and again if i'm just going to be picky maybe that extra shelf under the sink remove that for uh, a waste passing but the, the fact is it's probably only like three or four screws and i bet that could be removed and that is absolutely something that could be um accomplished now you may have noticed in my early flyby footage uh you have triple axles and it's a triple axle wide stance system i've never personally seen that because this thing is long but 
it's going to tow surprisingly well as a result. But on that note, um, so one of the things people will sometimes say about a wide stance stability axle system um, is, is that, well, you know, you cause a little extra tire scrub and a little extra wear and tear on the front tire. Well, yeah, if you're jackknifing into a parking space, that is technically true. Now, on a tandem axle, wide stance RV, I've done this for 13 years. I have seen so many RVs jackknifed on, on like concrete and asphalt. I've never seen a tire fail because of it. Um, unless you misload a tire, you're not going to wear a tire out. You're going to age a trailer tire out. We have triple Goodyear Endurance radials, uh, well, six of them actually on this. We also, holy crap, we have a bunch of stairs that looks like all stacked up in one spot. Um, that's going to be a point of concern for some folks, for sure. My guess, though, is if you're looking at a toy hauler like this, you are probably already more able of body. But what I was getting at is, how much tire scrub are we going to expect if you're jackknifing this into a parking space with that triple axle wide stance system? And the short answer to that is, I don't know, because I have no experience with it. And I think maybe the most important thing I can tell you is that I don't know. Because sometimes I think the most important thing I can tell you is that I don't know. I, I try to give you uh, the best idea that I can uh, with these videos, but I, I don't know everything. Um, I, I hope to get you there a little bit. And that might be one of those things that there's just not a lot of these out there where trying to get owner feedback might be uh, even a little bit difficult. But hey, I'll do the best I can for you. Now, something I really liked was all the good personal space in this bathroom. Case in point, here around the toilet. But I mean, this space, this is fantastic. And then similarly, this is a one-piece fiberglass shower enclosure. And uh, I, I tell you what, when this one, when it came to headroom in here, and not only is the headroom excellent in the shower, but with this little kind of double bend um, shower curtain rod that they have over here, you can give yourself the elbow room you need while still kind of keeping it out of the way when you're using the can, man. Obviously, I was a, uh, I was a pretty happy camper with that one. And in case you're curious about this flooring stuff that we've seen, this is like um, marine woven flooring. Uh, where, you know, it, it's not carpet, it's, uh, you know, it itself, it's basically a plastic material, you know, but it's made for this kind of use. Um, so we're looking at a 70 by 80 king bed, and they give you a king bed and a lot of room to walk around this. Now remember, this is one video of one of their floor plans. Like, they have one that's even bigger than this, that also has like a, uh, uh, a, a slide coming off the side of this thing here. We have another big XL vent fan up here for even more airflow. And I'm wondering uh, what kind of storage is up in those cabinets. Sometimes when the nose radius is back, you see a cabinet, but it's not really that deep. But that does not appear to be the case here. It's not the biggest cabinet in the RV, but that is way better than overhead storage I find in most things. Now, I've shoved the King mattress just all the way off to the side so you can see even under the mattress. Again, not a splinter of wood in this RV, and both sides of the RV have a pair of, again, fully aluminum dresser drawers, where I guess if you're not gonna put your crock socks and undies in there, you could file your taxes away. And I actually found a really good spot to show you kind of a cross section of a lot of the construction of the RV, and that's interestingly under the bed. Uh, because, you know, where you see everything, it's all aluminum framed, and then again, it's basically like Asdell. It's composite layering inside, outside, upside down, everywhere on this. Um, the RV is structurally, physically, effectively waterproof. That being said, I certainly would just, you know, wouldn't maintain your seals, but it, it, it won't decay. Now, over here on the right, you see an additional ladder. That's going to be for that Happy Jack power bed lift. Then there's that extra gate. That is kind of the middle gate section for the ramp patio. I've done just kind of a quick setup today, so you aren't really seeing, uh, you know, that in place quite yet. Now, over here, across from the bed, of course... You know, TV hookups, perfect little spot for it. But then we got this big old sucker right here. And not only is that another big chunk of storage, but you guessed it. This is going to be our washer dryer hookup position right here. Now, the way this is staged, you could probably put a combo in the bottom or you could remove all the shelving and put a stackable in it. Normally, I would show you the RV 
in road mode, but considering it has a slide or no slides, I don't think we're really going to have to worry about that. And I do believe my next order of business just rolled in beside us. That, if I'm not mistaken, is a 385 FL Alliance Paradigm. Um, that is one of the coolest things about this location, though. Uh, I mean, look, what RV dealership has a campground display space like this? Where you actually get to kind of see and feel and understand it. Like, it's just, this is such, this is a special place. There's probably not another dealership like this exactly on the world. I don't know. I anyway, so uh, back to this. So it's 41 feet and some odd inches, tip to tail maximum length, obviously, before you put the patio tailgate down. And I was just talking to uh, our lot manager over here. I was like, do you have any experience towing this thing? And he goes, oh my gosh, it is, they're, they're the best towing fifth wheels. That triple wide stance system absolutely does the trick. I asked him about tire scrub. He says, weirdly, I don't really experience that a lot just because the way that everything tends to pivot. Now, your experience might vary uh, from trip to trip or use to use. I don't know, but that's the information I was given. Uh, this is a six point hydraulic auto leveling system. You see that there's separate fuel inlets for one for generator, one for uh, the fuel station. That's pretty pretty common. I don't want to belabor that point too much. Little stinky slinky sewer hose holder next to the sewer outlet. And this is a single uh, stink pickle depository uh, point right here. The exhaust point, as it were. Um, tankless water heater. Uh, if you look in the upper right right now, that is an on-demand water heater. As long as you got propane and you got some kind of 12 volt, you got power. One of the neat things is this has a 200 watt factory solar package and it is one of the first RVs, not maybe not the first, I don't know, but one of the first RVs I've seen that is just building strictly with the intention of lithium batteries. And I think that is very cool. That is something a lot of people uh, have, uh, you know, I've seen uh, people say, you know, why are we using old technology in RVs uh, nowadays? Why aren't we using something better? Well, ATC, they, they, they said, you know what, as long as we're just bucking the normal trends anyway why don't we just keep on at it now up front here um you've got your 60 pounds of propane with the auto changeover regulator uh this is where your uh your generator prepped or rather i think you can get generator uh prep is it as an option because obviously that's what that enclosure is designed for but you can get a generator on it but look at this look at the just all of this and look at that gusseting oh my gosh again I've got a little bit of a horse trailer background. That's the kind of stuff I see in a heavy-duty gooseneck horse trailer. This is a uh, this is just a special piece. This is <laughs> this is not industry standard construction right here. Now it's so big that the awning almost looks small, but it's not. As I start wrapping my way around the side of this thing, you start to realize we're looking at a 41-foot fifth wheel, tip to tail, and uh, about half of that maybe more than half of that is awning space and the door is nicely cleared by the awning um uh, or the awning is nicely cleared by the what you, you know what i'm saying right I, I don't think that came out of my mouth the way i was exactly intending but okay and it, this kind of it, it caught my eye earlier uh the way that this construction actually like i thought something was wrong i thought something was bent but like the skirt line bends down to those Goodyear Endurance radials. And this is, by the way, a, uh, a triple torsion axle and suspension system. So if you're familiar with like my Rockwood and Flagstaff videos, it's that, only it's wide stance, and there's three of them, which is probably why this thing, it, so there's, uh, in normal travel trailers, often, you'll hear me talk about either wide stance or torsion suspension. And this is both, and it's a triple. That's probably why it's one of the best towing fifth wheels that our lot manager has ever experienced in his uh, very uh, <laughs> well-defined career. He's been doing this about 20 years. Now, I wanna tell you, I did not properly set up these steps. This, this video took me forever to put together, but I, I think it was worth it. This is, just, this is just something special. I love this thing. Um, I, I'm going to, <laughs> now all that being said, I'm gonna actually end on a bit of a sour note. It's got a ladder on the side. That's cool. Notice how the ladder comes up real short before you get to the roof. Um, it's cool that the roof is all aluminum. Here's a look at it. You can see the uh, all the air conditioners. You can peek at the solar panel up there. But man, I didn't really feel comfortable making that ladder to roof transition. 
you've got a there's nothing to hold on to up there it needs a handle at the top and then i think i would feel better about it that's all it needs now folks i hope you enjoyed this one I had a lot of fun going through this. I, I say all the time, I get excited when I see something different, and I don't know if they come much more different than that right there. Again, it's got a couple little hiccups on it. I really wish they would do something different with the ladder situation, but hey, it is what it is, you know? Uh, I'm gonna do my best to always shoot you straight, and if you appreciate that and all the time and effort it takes to juggle all this stuff alone, you know, I, I do all the camera work. I'm the one that took the partition out. I'm the one that puts the, I watch the comments. I do all the editing. It's just. Just me doing all this. If you appreciate all the effort there, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Like our video, let me know what you think about this crazy monstrosity back here. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone.